Namaste. Um, this is the gentle and restorative for this week. I plan on using a bolster and a strap. So have those tools available. If you don't have a strap at home, you can use a belt, a scarf, a necktie, something of that nature. Um, yesterday was Memorial Day and my son had a remake concert that it canceled. And so I drove him and his girlfriend down to Birmingham, which is, you know, a three hour drive. And I didn't get home till 2 a.m. So I'm pretty tired. Uh, but I have a sequence here that I think we're all going to enjoy. Uh, we're going to start with a strap on our backs. We'll get up to tabletop. We'll move into just a little bit of a flow to do some strengthening, but also some stretching. And then we're going to go into a seated um, sequence called Music City Hip Openers, uh, coined, named by Cora Wren. And then we're going to restore. So I'll meet you on the mat and we'll begin working with the legs once we do our breath work. So have your strap in hands to reach and we'll go ahead and seat down onto the back into a quartz pose. And if you get into the quartz pose and your back is a little uncomfortable, you can try bending your knees. Scooping the belly, tucking the tailbone, and then sending the legs back out. And if that still doesn't help, maybe just keeping the knees bent. And then as soon as you get into this positioning, close your eyes. And at first, just be aware of the room that you're in. And with the eyes closed, picturing what the room looks like, where the furniture is placed, and where your mat is set up. Feel the flooring underneath your body, but also notice the textures that you're sensing from any exposed skin. For instance, your upper arms may be on the sticky mat, but your hands may be on carpet or a wood floor. Do the same thing with your legs and feet. And then notice what's around your body, more specifically your clothing. How does the clothing feel upon your skin? Where is it loose and where is it more form fitting? And all of this has been still at surface level. So let's take this awareness deeper by bringing more depth to the breath Doing that deep belly breathing. And allowing the breath to tap you back to the inside. Dropping below the surface of your body. This is an important aspect in yoga because if you look at the eight limbed path, the first couple, yamas and niyamas, are about the code of conduct. The third step is the posing. The fourth step is the breath work. And it's the breath work that leads us to the next stage of pratyahara. Where we're looking, listening, and feeling from the inside. Let's continue to use a controlled breath to take ourselves there. 
And then let's pull the feet together, point through your toes, stretch the arms overhead, and sway through your back. You're making a morning stretch. Pulling the limbs to opposite sides of the room. And then as you exhale, cradle your knees. Apandasana. Lengthening the low back. Juicing up the hip joints and affirming mentally, I reduce all my scattered forces to rise up and away into the sky. Now let's lower the left foot down, keep your right knee pulled in, and this is where we're going to take the strap and we're going to wrap it around the ball of the foot and send it out and up. Finding your edge of flexibility with the back of the leg. Pulling gently on the strap. Pushing up through the heel. Padagustasana A. Now, sometimes we don't even realize it, but the buttocks is wanting to lift off the floor to try to stay grounded. And now extend your left leg forward and out. And then push the foot into the fabric, changing up the sensation. Now take both ends of the strap into your right hand. Let your left hand slip down to your left hip. And then open the leg to the right. Stretch out through the left leg that's on the mat. And keep pushing the foot into the fabric of the strap. From Padagustasana B, Continue to hold and breathe. Inhale, let's lift the leg overhead. Swap the hand to hold the strap, but you're just gonna teeter it slightly over your midline. In other words, you're staying completely on your back. Working this IT band, the stretch on the outside of the leg. Now open up your right arm and hands and begin to tip over towards your outer left hip, sending that leg across the body into a twist. Continuing to pull the strap lightly, but also continuing to push the foot into the strap. And when you do both of those activities, you're gonna feel more sensation fire up. And if it's too much, then do less. To be more conservative in the pose, we keep the right shoulder touching down. So that may mean you're lifting the leg up a little higher. If the shoulder wants to hover, you just have to be mindful that you don't take it across to the threshold of pain as that connective tissue stretches open. Now on your next in-breath, we're gonna roll back to the lower part of the spine, but the leg is still crossing over the belly. We're gonna turn that top foot by spinning the pinky toe side towards the ceiling where that sole of the foot is facing the left hand wall. It's a whole different stretch for the ankle. Now turn 
the big toe back up towards the ceiling, bring it to center, bend the knee and release that foot to the sticky mat. Bring your left knee towards your chest. We'll do that same sequence, wrapping the up around the sole of the foot and sending it skyward. Both hands holding either side of the strap, pulling lightly and pushing upward through the heel. That'll help to straighten the leg. Test the water, see if you can slide your right leg out. And if that's too much, you can always bring it back. Adha Bhusasana A, the supine form. Slow, deep, rhythmic breathing. Take both ends of the strap now into your left hand and let your right hand slip on top of the right hip. And then open to B. Duck the leg away from you. Again, tugging slightly on the strap, but also equally pushing the foot back into the fabric. Doing that deep belly breathing. Inhale, let's bring the leg back up, swap hands to hold the strap. Send it just slightly across the navel. The foot's turned up the regular way on this one. And then your left arm is gonna open up. And then you can spin into your twist. Checking in to see if you want to be a little bit more liberal or conservative with the twist. That will be determined on the location of the left shoulder. Have an equal measured breath in the twist. Inhale, roll back to the sacral area with that leg still across your midline. And this is where we're gonna stretch the ankle more, turning the pinky toe side of the foot up towards the ceiling where the bottom of the foot is actually facing the right hand wall. And then push the mound of the big toe back up towards the ceiling. Bring it to center, bend the knee and remove the strap. All right, from here, we're going to bend both knees. Roll over to one side, prop yourself up. And come to a tabletop position. So in your tabletop position, we're gonna work into a side bend. Walk your hands over to the right, shoulders or shoulder distance apart. Left arm's gonna extend out, drop halfway or more towards the floor. So breathe into that left side. Inhale, coming back up, walk your hands over to the left, same idea. 
is lengthening and dropping halfway. Nice, full, deep yogic breath. One more breath. And then on your next inhale, bring the right hand in, walk it back to the mat, but step your hands a baby step beyond the shoulders to curl the toes under and to push up and back to downward facing dog. Now, when you're powering down through the palms, stretch up and out of your wrists. But then we're gonna do a little bit more weight bearing on the hands, a little bit more strengthening for the upper body. So we're gonna step the left foot about halfway towards the hands. We rock the shoulders to stack the bones and joints and then pick up the right foot. It's almost like you're going to kick up into a handstand, but obviously we're not going there. All right, once you build a little strength and stamina, bend the left knee more to drop the toes, step back downward facing dog. Notice this gives a break to the hands, a little bit of a break to the shoulders, even though we're still weight bearing. So let's size it up more, right foot stepping halfway the hands, rocking shoulders over wrists, looking down at that space between the thumbs, holding and breathing. I know this is tough, but try to bear with me. All right, bend the right knee, lower the left foot, step back downward facing dog. All right, let's sink to the knees and let's give the arms a break, child's pose. So in other words, the elbows can drape to the floor. They can also circle around you, which I find to be a little bit more relaxing, but that depends person to person. You might even still feel a little heat stemming from your hands after that weight bearing. So let's bear witness to that slowly dissipating. Breathing into your back long. Affirming while you're here, I now release and relax away from all outer involvements into my own inner haven of peace. Inhale, stretch your arms forward and out. Lift the head up, look down the length of your mat, rock up hands and knees. Exhale, down dog. All right, from here, we're going to slowly step the feet forward. Keep stepping, keep stepping, and lifting the hands along the way until you're at the top of the mat. Press down through the soles of the feet. Attempt to straighten out through the legs. Fold up from your hips and let your arms release. Don't worry if your hands touch your feet or not. It's not really the point. Ensure your neck's relaxing. And that you're still established with your breath, but now it's okay to emphasize your exhalations. All right, let's put a little bit in the knees and inhale, come up. Exhale, hands to heart. All right, let's flow. Inhale, let your arms circle wide and overhead, earth off And if it feels okay for the shoulders and neck, pull the palms together and look up. 
upward worship. Exhale, hands come down on the middle as you hinge and fold. Uttanasana. Inhale, slide your hands up your leg bones. Lengthen out through the vertebrae. Look out with your eyes. Exhale, close on in. All right, we're going to inhale to plank. And once you step back into your plank pose, do a little weight bearing here. Refine your alignment. Keep your head up so your neck's in line with your spine. And then we're going to softly bend the right knee to slide the right foot through under the body. Continue to slide it out. Buckle the arms to sink down to your outer leg. And then the right arm to the right side. Come down to the right ear and send your left arm in front of you. This is one variation of four point star. This is one of those positions where you can try to let go, relax, and give to gravity. And then slide your left hand towards you. Push in that palm to bring the right hand in. You're restacking on the arms. And then tuck the back toes. Pop up that right hip and walk it back to your plank. All right, reestablish plank position. Softly bend your left knee. Slide the left foot under. Stay stacked. Look down and then continue to buckle the arm, slide the left foot through, lower to the outer left thigh. Right arm reaches ahead, left arm to your left side, pour down to your left ear. Just try to relax and breathe. Work on sliding the hands closer, lifting the upper body, curling the back toes, coming back to plank. 
and then dropping the knees, backing your hips up over them, backing your hands up to be under the shoulders, inhale to cow. And then you're gonna maintain your cow. In other words, your sits bones are up, your belly sinking, but we're going to walk the arms out and drip towards the chest and chin or your forehead if that feels better. We're not holding it like yin. Inhale, slide the hands back. Now, reverse it to cat, cat stretch. Tailbone drops, shoulders are up. Inhale, cow. Maintain that sway in the low back. Walk the arms out and melt down. Continuing the flow, inhale, hands restack, belly draws in, heart hides away, chin tucks to the chest. We're gonna do one more of those. Inhale, cow. Exhale, arms walk out and drop down towards your face. Chin or forehead. Inhale, stack. Exhale, contract. Once you've held that cat stretch, return to tabletop. Hands are gonna baby step beyond the shoulders. Curl the toes. Press up and back, downward facing dog. We're going to do the strengthening one last time. Left foot steps halfway towards your hands. Lift the back foot. Straighten the arms. Look down towards your mat. Step the right foot down. The left foot back to join down dog. Second side, right foot halfway forward. Lift the back foot. Get your arms prepared like you're about to spring into a handstand. But then we're going to step back downward facing dog. All right, from here, walk your hands back towards your feet. Closing into your Uttanasana. Letting go in your head and neck. And then inhale, slide your hands up. Arda Uttanasana. Exhale, fold back down. Bend the knees, inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands to heart. All right, we're gonna work with some balance. Hada Gustasana A. So I'm gonna stack the left hand to the hip and then catch the right knee. And if your balance is really off, you can have both hands to the hip and the knee not as high where the foot is barely hovering so that if you need to touch down to establish your balance, you can do that as many times as you need to. And then open to B. Bring it back to A and release. Second side, right hand hip, catch the left knee. And then remember, if you don't wanna hold it, both hands to the hip and that foot can hover. So if you need to tiptoe down, you can. Gaze at one spot. And let's open to B. And by the way, you can do the same thing. Not elevating the knee as high. 
and that left big toe can assist with balance. Bring it back to A and release. Okay, this is where you may need your strap. So let's come back down to the floor. This sequence is the Music City Hip Openers. And honestly, I was reminded of this sequence for two reasons. One, I went to see a bluegrass band. And that's all you see is stringed instruments, no drums, it's guitar, mandolin, fiddle, banjo, upright bass. So I think the easier way to do it is to bring the left foot in towards the pubic bone. Is it sitting cross-legged, except the right knee's turned up. I'm gonna show you the more advanced way. You may need the more gentle way, which requires a strap. I'm gonna do this really quick. So we start here, open, send it across, and twist, all right? So if that's challenging, or if you find that your spine's rounding, I would rather your spine be lifted. And this is where the strap is so useful because it can work as an extension of your arms and hands, say, if your hamstrings are tighter. And it's okay if your upper body's leaning back even, as long as it's straight instead of rounded out, okay? So I'm gonna do it the gentle way with the strap today. So this is the first position. So you're making that strap kind of taut, right? So I can even bend my elbows and pull lightly on the strap. Very similar to what we did on our back earlier. We're going to bring the strap together into the right hand, or you can hold the foot with your hand, of course. And that leg spins off to the right side and your left hand comes to your left hip. And you try to sit up nice and tall. To me, this is a much harder version than the one lying down, which is why I warmed this up first. And then take it across the body, swap hands again to hold the outside of the foot or the strap. That's gonna work that IT band. Lift your heart, extend your right arm, keep that leg across the body as you spin away from it. May bring the arm back, bend that knee, now we can move to the second side. Right heel in towards the pubic bone. Left knee's gonna stand up. I'm gonna do it this gentle way, but you can use your hands, obviously. Straighten out the leg. Straighten out your back as best you can. It's okay if you're in more of a V shape. You kind of have to be if your leg's out. Right, you're here the spine can come more over the pelvis as the leg comes towards the face. So it's not gonna appear to look the same, but it is the same pose. And again, if you wanna activate your arms a little bit, there's that option. Prauchasana. And then both ends of the strap into the left hand. Turn that leg open, right hand to the right hip. Leg in front. Swap hands to hold the strap. Send it across the body. Left arm out. Twist left.
Exhale, unwind. Release the foot in strap. And this is where I want you to have the bolster next to you, although we're not going to use it yet. We're going to come down to our backs. And the left foot crosses over the right knee for this kind of half pigeon variation. You may feel like this is plenty. You may want to pick up the right foot and lace your hands behind the right leg. Maybe you want to go to this level, but your hands don't reach. Well, that's okay because we have a strap here and the strap can go behind the leg and you can hold the strap with your hands. So that way you can go deeper, even if your arms don't reach around. Let's close the eyes here. Move back into the breath to be guided back to Pratyahara. And then the sixth stage after Pratyahara is Dharana, leading to Dhyana, leading to Samadhi. And basically that means our withdrawal of the outer senses can lead us to a deeper state of concentration. The deeper concentration can guide us into a meditative state. And in that meditative state, we can find profound peace. All right, let's release. Let's uncross the left foot. So let's reset the right ankle over the left knee. Check in here first. Otherwise, thread your hand or the strength behind your left leg. This is my boyfriend's new favorite pose. <laughs> He has a really difficult time with regular pigeon. So his hips obviously need, you know, another pose to help them to open. And he loves this one. All right, let's take one last breath. And then we'll sink both feet to the sticky mat. Now this is where the bolster is gonna come in. We're gonna take the bolster and stand it up in between the feet, shins and knees, okay? The arms are going to reach out shoulder height. And it may be that your twist, you just send the knees over to the left. You might be a person where you like hovering the feet, tucking the knees, and then rolling them to the left. I don't care which way you do it. But we're allowing the bolster to provide support. We're going to change up the arms. Instead of being out like a T, we're going to slide them down into an A frame position. Okay. And then turn your head to the left shoulder. And close your eyes. If that doesn't feel good to the neck, you can keep it centered. <coughs> so 
sorry, that head turn started making me cough. I'm gonna go back to neutral. Do turn your head, bring the head back to center. Slide your arms more open and out like a T. Grip in your belly, contain that bolster, bring the legs back and settle the feet to the floor. just be here and then we'll wind ourselves over to the other side so determine do you just want to turn the feet and knees down to the right or do you prefer floating the feet tucking the knees and then rolling them to the right start with your legs and then slide your arms down again a frame style, and then turn your head to the right. Unless it makes you cough like it was for me, or if it's uncomfortable or painful, you can turn it back to center.
affirming new peace, new life, new consciousness is flooding through my being. life, new peace, new consciousness is flowing through my being. Now turn your head to neutral first. And then pick up the knees, sink the feet down and contain that bolster between the legs like we set up with. Your right arm is actually gonna stretch across your chest. Your left hand is going to be placed on top of that right upper arm. Please don't pull or yank. You're just providing slight weight bearing. Your 
do the same thing. Now with the left arm across and the right hand providing just a little weight bearing on top of that arm. Wow, I have a shocking difference with this today. Right from here, we're actually just going to now move one of the legs over to spill the bolster flat to the floor. And then we can stretch out the legs on top. And your hands are welcome to rest anywhere. We're moving into Shavasana. So this is where we're letting the poses go. We're letting the breath control go. And hopefully already established in Pratyahara, this is where we develop that deeper concentration to move to a meditative state for that profound moment of peace. And so in order to get there, we need something to concentrate on, whether it's a word or a phrase or a symbol or a breath. Or even the space between each breath or thought.
take five more breaths. And feel free to control these last few breaths. To reawaken your mind and body. And walking the feet on top of that bolster and just kind of rocking the knees side to side. Turning over completely. Coming up to take a seat. Just to inform you that in a few days time, we're gonna be having a full moon. And I sent you guys a bonus of a meditation this morning. It's legs up the wall with the chakra waterfall meditation. And it's perfect around the full moon. So if you feel like you need a little bit more restoration, Absolutely, look up that um, email I sent you guys, look up that waterfall meditation and enjoy it. Bring your hands to prayer position. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. May there be peace, peace, everlasting peace. And may we be an instrument of that peace. Namaste.